Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we're going to apply Ampere's Law to calculate the magnetic field produced by this coax cable. Uh, the coax cable has a conductor on the inside and that conductor is going to carry a current coming out of the page and the shell, the conducting shell on the exterior here is going to carry a total current going into the page. So I'll show you how to calculate the magnetic field everywhere in space from this coax cable. Uh, remember the deal, if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you like what I'm doing on this channel consider subscribing. Again if you don't understand anything shoot me a comment, send me an email, I'll help you out. All right, so we want to apply Ampere's law, which is this guy up here, which is uh, the integral of the magnetic field over a closed loop. That's what that kind of circle here means here. This here just means a closed loop. Okay, and we want to integrate the magnetic field over that closed loop. And the right-hand side of Ampere's law says, well, that has to be equal to a constant mu zero multiplied by how much current is going through the surface that's enclosed by this closed loop. So for this problem, I'm interested in the field in the region inside this interior conductor. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to form a closed loop now in that region where I want to calculate the field. Okay, so in this case here, I have to form a closed loop. For example, the red dotted line here is a closed loop in that region. So this Amperian loop is going to allow me to calculate the magnetic field anywhere in this region, right? I can make the loop smaller or bigger, extend it right up until uh, the outer edge of this conductor. Now the other region I'm interested in is what is the magnetic field between this inner conductor and the interior radius of this outer conductor. So everywhere in this region here. So I've created a, an Amperian loop here by the green dotted line. So I'm going to use this loop to calculate the field in that region. All right, likewise, if I wanted to calculate the field inside this outer conductor, what you have to do is you create a loop, which I've done here again by this dashed line here, the purple dashed line, um, in that region. And the last region is what happens now when I'm outside of the overall conductor. So my radius is bigger than the outer radius of that outer conductor. So again, now you simply place a loop, again, a closed loop. This one is represented here by this blue dotted line. Okay, you place a Amperian loop in that region here, and that's how we're going to calculate the field in all of these different regions by using these different loops. So that's the number one key. The next thing now is we're going to apply Ampere's law to simplify this. I'm gonna look independently at the left-hand side. How do you evaluate this guy? We're going to see that this side, the left-hand side of Ampere's law, is the same for any object that has this cylindrical symmetry. And now I'm going to show you how you calculate the right-hand side of Ampere's law for the different loops. So let's go ahead now and look at each case independently. Okay, so let's look at our conductor again. So this interior conductor has a radius A, and the outer conductor has an inner radius B, and an outer radius C. And in this first part here, I'm interested in what is the magnetic field everywhere in the region where I'm less, I'm inside this interior conductor, okay? So again, what you have to do is you create a, an Amperian loop that is inside this region, okay? And now the key part here, we're gonna look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side independently. We'll do the left-hand side first. It's the easiest, actually. So again, it's the integral of B over this over this closed loop. Now, one important part to know about objects with cylindrical symmetry is that the magnetic field, again, if the current I is coming out, the direction of the field, again, it's gonna do circles around that, um, around the wire, and it's always going to be tangent to this Amperian loop. So that's gonna be the direction of the field, and that's important, actually, because this vector DL this is a vector that is also, it goes along that Amperian loop. So it is also tangent to the loop. So that means that this scalar product, you can kind of eliminate that, and you can simply write it as the integral of B times DL. Okay, and again, it's the magnitude of the field over the magnitude of all of those DLs. That's it, all right, that's the left-hand side. Now there's one other simplification for this left-hand side, and that is that the magnetic field, everywhere, since I'm always the same distance away from the center of the wire, 
All right, the magnetic field, the magnitude anyway, is going to be constant. Okay, and if the magnetic field amplitude here is a constant, it means you can take it out of the integral. So let's take it out, and then all you're left with is this guy. And this guy over here, well, that's very, very simple. I'm simply integrating all of these small elements dl. This simply means I'm adding all of those little elements dl. So that there is simply the circumference, which in this case is going to be 2 pi times the radius of that Amperian loop. So at the end, for any object really with cylindrical symmetry, the left-hand side of Ampere's law always looks the same. It's the magnitude of the field times 2 pi times r, and this is the circumference of that loop. So this term is always going to look the same for all of the different uh, cases we're going to look at here. So that equals to mu zero multiplied by the current enclosed. Well, we notice here that this loop over here has a certain area, right? It has a certain area, and the area of my loop, let's write it over here, the area enclosed by this loop, in this case is pi, and the radius of that loop is r squared, so that there is the area enclosed by my loop. Now that is smaller than the total area, right? The total area is given by, by this guy over here, right? The area is, depends on the total radius of that conductor, which in this case is a squared. Now, so let's look at the right-hand side over here. So we want to know how much current is actually enclosed by my loop. So it's not going to be the total current I. There's a total current I coming out of there. It's only going to be a fraction of the total current I. And that fraction, it basically is the fraction of the area. So it looks something like this. It looks pi r squared, and this is pi a squared. Now there's another way you could actually calculate that. Um, you can use the current density if you wanted. A lot of times you can write down on op law using the current density. The current density is given by the letter J, and for this case, it's the total current divided by the total area, pi A squared. Now, if you want to know how to calculate the total current, the current means you simply have to integrate this current density and you have to integrate over the area of loop in question. Now again, since this current current density is a constant, that means you can actually take it out of the integral, and then what's your left, what, uh, what you're left with is the integral of all the elements of the area enclosed by my loop. Well, that's very easy. See, that's simply J multiplied by this second term over here is the to total area of my loop which is pi r squared. You combine both terms, again, that gives you the total current now, is the current density multiplied by the area in question. Again, again, since the current density is constant for this wire, that's pretty simple, pretty simple expression. And you get back to the same expression that I had over here. All right, now we can simplify quite a few terms. So let's look at both sides. There's a pi over here, there's another one here. There's, there's also, there's an R squared on this side, on the right-hand side, and there's an R on this side. So now let's go back, back and let's isolate B, which is what we were trying to find. So now we get mu zero, we get two pi. We still have A squared there, keep that term. I'm, I'm gonna keep the I right here. And then I'm also going to notice that there's still an R over here. We still have a radius like that. So this here is the general expression for any radius r that is less than or equal to the radius of this inner conductor. This is the expression for the magnetic field. So it's always good to take a couple limits. What happens if r equals to zero? Well, you substitute r equals to zero in here, and what do you get? You get that b has to be equal to zero. Uh, we could take another limit. What hap happens if r equals to A. So that means my Amperian loop would be right out here on this exterior surface of this inner conductor. Well, all you do is you substitute the value A in here, and what you get is a magnetic field strength, which equals to mu zero, 
multiplied by i. And now you see one of these a's is going to cancel with the area down here. And you're going to be left with 2 pi times a. Actually, this for here should look familiar to you. This here looks like the equation of a magnetic field produced by a single wire. Okay, so that is our first region. Now let's go ahead in the other regions and calculate the magnitude of the field. Okay, so here's the next region here. It's the region here between both conductors, right? So it's when the vector R is bigger than A, but it's less than B. So that means I'm inside this non-conducting region over here. What you do is you simply place an Amperian loop over here, and you apply Ampere's law. Ampere's law is the closed... Now the integral of b over a closed loop, and that has to be equal to mu zero multiplied by i enclosed. All right, like I just said before, the left-hand side of Ampere's law is always the same for objects with cylindrical symmetry. b can come outside of that integral because it's going to be uniform since I'm always the same distance away from the conductor. And this side over here, we're left with the total circumference of that um, Amperian loop. Now for this problem, it's pretty simple to calculate the current enclosed. Let's think about the right-hand side over here. How much current is enclosed here? Well, this Amperian loop encloses this entire conductor. And we said at the beginning that this entire conductor carries a total current I coming out of the page. So that means that this guy over here is simply I, and that's it. <laughs> So here we're left with, divide through by, eliminate uh, this side over here. We're left with mu zero multiplied by the current divided by two pi times the radius. And this is valid again, always within this region here. Okay, so that's A, R, and B. All right, so that's it. That's region two. That one's pretty straightforward. All right, so here's Ampere's law again. Um, let's write it down. Uh, B dot DL is equal to mu zero times I enclosed. Now I'm interested in the magnetic field here that's uh, located in the region here within this outer conductor. So what I did was I placed an Amperian loop out there in that outer conductor. So now let's go ahead and apply Ampere's law. The left-hand side, guess what? It's always the same. Oops, let's try that again. Yeah, Ampere's law for this outer region is always B multiplied by the circumference of that loop, and that's it. That has to be equal to mu zero multiplied by the enclosed current. Now, how much current is actually enclosed? So this is kind of the hard part for this problem. All right. So I'm going to break it down into two parts. First of all, we notice that it encloses all of the current from this interior conductor. Right? So you'd certainly have to have that. So it's mu zero, definitely everything from the inner conductor. So that's the total current I. Plus, well, now one thing you got to be careful of is the current in the outer conductor goes in the opposite direction. Right? Remember, we had I coming out of the page, but on the outside, we have I going into page. Now, since those are going in opposite directions, uh, we have to use a different sign, right? Just to kind of do this. And I'm going to call the total current here outside. So this second term over here is simply the current kind of in this part of the shell here. It's not the total shell. It's only part of that area that's enclosed in this uh, Amperian loop. So let's go ahead and calculate that now. So the current that's in this outer shell, again, it's not going to be the total current I because my Amperian loop doesn't go all the way to the edge. So it's only a fraction of that total current I. And again, it's the fraction now is you have to compare the areas. Compare the total area of the shell. The total area of the shell is pi. And again, it's the outer area, so that would be c squared and minus b squared. All right, you take the difference of the two areas, that'll give you the total area of this cylindrical shell. Now you compare that to the area of just this part here that's enclosed by my Amperian loop. The area here, oops, uh, the area in this air in this section, again, it's pi, and it's going to be r squared minus b squared. 
All right, now we substitute that in our expression over here. So the current out is going to be pi c squared minus b squared. And pi, this is r squared minus b squared. Okay. Now you could take some limits here. What happens when r equals to b? Right? When r equals to b, what happens to the current outside? How much current is actually enclosed if r equals to b? Well, you substitute it here. You'll get b squared minus b squared. Oh, you get zero. And that's right. If I choose my Ampereian loop such that it's just along this surface over here, there's not going to be any current enclosed, at least in this outer section. Now, there's another limit you could take. What happens when r equals to c? So in that case, you've placed your Ampereian loop all the way on the outside over here. So the amount of current on this outer section that you've included in your loop, well, again, that case is easy to take. So I out in that limit is equal to what? So you substitute C for R. You notice the numerator and the denominator are going to be the exact same. So you're going to be left with the total current I. Now keep in mind it's going in the opposite direction, but we're going to take care of that with this sign over there. Okay, so now we simply have to put, put everything together. So let's look at our expression, 2 pi r. That's always the same. And now I'm going to substitute mu0, the current from the interior conductor, minus, uh, before substituting i out, let me just get rid of the pi's here. We don't need those since they're the same. Now simply substitute this whole term here. So you get r squared minus b squared divided by c squared minus b squared close the bracket, and you also have a current I there. Now what I suggest now is probably putting things on a common denominator and, and then simplifying this side. So if you put things on a common denominator, uh, what we first do, let's factor out the current I. Uh, if factor out the current I, that simplifies and looks like this. And now if you put things on a common denominator, uh, what it's going to look like now, you're going to have mu zero. Here you're going to have C squared minus B squared and distribute the, neg the negative line, r squared and plus b squared. And then you have i. And then don't forget to put the denominator in there, c squared minus b squared. It looks pretty messy, but uh, don't worry about it. Just simplify it as much as you can. In this case, you can simplify by the b squareds. Now we're going to get one last expression here, here for magnitude of the field, mu0 divided by 2 pi r. And you're going to have uh, another term here that it depends on the radius. Uh, C squared minus R squared. And C squared minus B squared. And all of that gets multiplied by the current. Okay. So there you have it, folks. So now we could take some other limits. Uh, it's always worth whenever you have this. Just check out your answer. So again, what happens now when... Let's make a bit of space here. Let's take a couple limits here. So let's take the limit when r equals to b. Well, you think about it. So my Ampereian loop would be this one. That means I wouldn't be enclosing any current in this outer section. So the magnetic field would simply be the magnetic field produced by this interior conductor. So let's have a look at our expression when I substitute r equals to b. You notice that this whole term here is going to cancel out because it's going to be the exact same. And what you're going to be left with in that limit is that b is simply equal to mu0 divided by 2 pi b, because that's the value, value of the radius, and multiplied by the current. And that makes sense. So that looks exactly like the magnetic field simply produced by a, by a wire located at the center. We could take one more limit now. What happens when r equals to c? Think, think about when r equals to c. Again, your Ampereian loop now is all the way out, out here. Well, what is the total current enclosed when I'm all the way out here? The total incur current enclosed has to be zero because you're enclosing all of this and you're also closing everything on this outer shell. And since they're going in opposite directions, the total current has to be zero. So let's look at our expression now. When r equals to c, see the numerator here, you're going to have c squared minus c squared. That's going to give you zero. That means that the magnetic field on the outside has to be zero. All right, good job. All right, the last region is the easiest one. 
at least for this problem. Again, Ampere's law, integral BDL must be equal to mu zero times the current enclosed by my loop. Now I'm looking for the field in the region outside of the coax cable. Okay, and that region out there, that means you gotta place a loop outside of that region. Okay, now we, again, we start with the left-hand side, always the same for a cylindrical symmetry. It's B, 2 pi r equals to mu zero. Okay, now what is the total current enclosed? Well, the total current enclosed, well, I'm enclosing all of the current here, and I know that has a value i coming out of the page. However, now I'm also enclosing all of the current in this outer conductor. And that current is also I, except it's going into the page. So what does that mean? So this term over here looks like I. This guy here looks like I in. Now keep in mind they're going in opposite directions, so the way you kind of deal with that here is to introduce a negative sign. You choose one direction is positive, one direction is negative, and there you have it. So the total current now, like I said, this side was really easy. This is simply I minus I, which gives me zero. So the field everywhere on the outside of this coax cable with a current I coming out and a current I going into the page uh, must be equal to zero. Okay, so that one's pretty easy. Now let's look at the general solution and let's sketch what the field looks like everywhere in space. All right, so here's our kind of last step here. It's always good to kind of sketch your results. So we've got the different areas that we examined or different regions in space. And I've written out the magnitudes of the magnetic field that we've solved for. So in the region when we were inside that interior conductor, our magnetic field depended linearly on the value of R. So that would simply look like a straight line. All right, the next region now was kind of in the middle of that non-conducting region over here when the distance R was between the outer uh, radius of the interior conductor but less than the interior radius of that outer conductor and that one simply looks like 1 over R. So that's something that gets smaller. Try to sketch that like that. There you go. Um, maybe sketch it a little bit lower here. A little smoother like that. Okay. Now the next one was within that outer shell. What did the magnetic field look like? So again, it starts off right here at this point, which we showed. And the important thing is that by the time we get out to the uh, exterior surface, the magnetic field has to go to zero. So it also kind of drops down like this. And it looks something like that. And now the last part was the purple that's on the outside of the coax cable. Again, in this case, this is a special coax cable because I had the same current in the interior conductor and the outer shell. So the total current enclosed was zero, which means that the magnetic field here has to be zero on the outside. Okay, so that's what the magnetic field kind of looks like just as a rough sketch. Anyway, hopefully you kind of understand all the steps and you find these problems a little bit easier now.